Welcome back to Desire to Inspire. It's your mama's favorite podcast. You heard? And uh, it's your boy's birthday. Big episode, ladies and gentlemen. Big, big fucking episode. Not only is it your birthday, but it's Thanksgiving. Those things don't correlate, man. Don't, don't put down my birthday like that. Well, we got the dynamic duo episode. Yeah. Where we're going to yeah, celebrate, we are celebrating we're a couple things. Talk about them both because the time is here the year is almost over it's also a milestone in the fact that i think this might be the only episode i've ever wore jeans on dude this might be the second time i've ever seen you wear jeans you remember me on saturday saying oh my god i feel like i never see dylan every time we go out i'm in jeans i don't believe that i what else would i wear out i feel like you're like justin and wear like sweatpants and shorts i would never wear sweatpants like out to the bar unless like it's jock and jills (laughs) like if i'm going to get like just dinner and go home I, I never go out for the night in anything but jeans. When I saw you... That they definitely old. can't see that. I know. I, I was waiting for that one to fall over. <laughs> oh, shit. I forgot about that. It started that. to wobble around. I'm like, uh-oh. Should I check it? Brand new phone down. No, it didn't move like that. It just right. gave a little waver. Um, yeah. I saw you in jeans, and I was like, I feel like I've never seen Dylan wear jeans out. Every Ohio State game that we've ever been to. They're black, though. Is that what Sometimes. It is? But uh, also, what ones did I have on that day? Light, light wash like these. Those were the same ones that I wore to protagonist. Both actually times that we've been there together. Well, I guess that just means that I don't pay attention to you as much so. as I thought, and I apologize. I will do better. Thanks, because they look good on you. Can't Appreciate lie. it. Can't lie. I saw it. I was like, that's a good fit. He had the little jeans rolled up. Like there was going to be a flood. Because it's not a good fit. They're a little short. <laughs> I have to roll them up because if not, they look a little too short, period. They're from Target. And they were, I was like, damn, these are like exactly what I was looking for. But they only had a size too short. Mm. And I'm like, just roll them up. Or if I wear them with like high tops, it doesn't matter. Okay. Because they, they're far enough. I really only need like one more inch. You know what's fucked up? I never, I'm like, damn, these pair of jeans are too short. You've never, yeah, but like. What size length do you wear? Uh, this thing's 30. close to me today. Yeah, real. Close. That's what those short. That's what those jeans were. We we're thirty. Uh, <laughs> so I usually wear like girl. thirty, but actually sometimes I do. I feel like growing up as a kid, my mom would always tell me that I had to wear a thirty-four length, and I was always stepping on it, man. Like I'm like I'm not this tall. <laughs> yeah, that's when clothes were cool though, and they were baggy and over. I don't know, man. I was like stepping on them, ripping up the bottoms. Your mom knew what fashion was. Definitely thirty twos. Yeah. I, uh, to this day, I would always get hand-me-downs for my cousins, and the jeans I would always have to get rid of because they were a wee bit too big. All my cousins are basically girls, so I didn't have any of that. Man, I, some of the jeans I wear now, I was going to say, oh, tight. No, well, you wouldn't even know. <laughs> that terrified me. To be fair, though, I don't fit in my cousin's jeans back then. <laughs> yeah, they would uh, always give me their hand-me-downs, and the jeans would always be way too long lengthwise, waist-wise. We were pretty similar, but they were they were taller. I wasn't similar waist wise. <laughs> <laughs> no, you were a thick boy. The other way around. <laughs> skinny? Not that I was skinny. They, they were, were just, thicker. They were that extra large meal. Yeah. Ah. Yeah. You know. Sometimes it'd be like that. Supersize me. Are they still supersize me? You don't gotta answer that. I don't think they're watching, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Is your family uh, an active family? Like, did you, I know that we've kind of touched on this, but like bringing it up again, like growing up, what was the influence like to be like healthy? There wasn't wise? one. None at all? To be healthy food wise? Mm-hmm. Absolutely not. I feel that. Never one time did health even enter the conversation. Did you have like an aunt or uncle or somebody that ever preached it? No. I feel like there's always Literally, an outlier in the family. Me. Damn. All right. Me. Yep. I became it. Changing that we family didn't have tree, it. baby. Yeah, we didn't have that. But, uh, I mean, we, me and my brother played sports, so I think it made it easier. Okay. So I could eat, we could still eat like shit. Yeah. Because that's why it was such a rude awakening when I went to college. Do you think it's a newfound thing to be like this healthier snack craze for kids, adults, our age? I don't know. I don't... Or is it just because now we're cognizant of it and we can actually like understand what we're putting in our body that we think there's a push for healthier snacks? Kind of. I think that a lot of it comes down to thinking there's a healthier push, even though there might not necessarily be Damn. because of like organic and this and that. That probably isn't really that healthy anyways. It's just marketed in a way that's healthier. Yeah. 
But I also think that it's just a generational change where it's like, hey, let's try to be a little more conscious of this now moving forward because we weren't like I would be that way. Yeah, because like, because my family wasn't conscious of it. I'm going to be like overly conscious of like, hey, like it because if you don't give it to a kid, they'll never know any better. That's a fact. And so then when someone else gives it to them, it's not going to taste good because they haven't been eating sugar or processed shit all the time. It's going to be like, what the fuck is this? Yeah. There was this girl. Actually, when I went to Disney last year, mm-hmm. there was this kid who was like on the bus next to us. It was like nine o'clock. We're going back at night. She's like, can we please go get some healthy food? Like she was begging. Damn. She's from the UK, which is also, I think, another okay. another half of it. Like they were definitely from the UK. And she's like, can we go get some healthy snacks? I'm sick of eating like this all the time. And she was like asking her. She was probably seven years old. Damn. Asking her parents to go get some fruit or some healthy snacks. She just kept saying some healthy snacks. Wow. That like, seven-year-old is doing better than three-fourths of America. Yeah. I was like, damn, it's weird. This is a, it's a social thing. Yeah, it definitely is. It definitely is. I um, went back to my old ways and got some Flaming Hots. And After you literally just posted that TikTok about your Flaming Hot addiction. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not proud of it. You did it this week? Yeah. How is it reacting to your body? Um... I'm only asking because that might not be good for what's coming up. I haven't noticed a change. Mm. Good luck. I know. I don't know if I'd have introduced something like that after some time off. Oh, I haven't taken much time off. So what are you saying? I'm back on the train. Uh, because I bought them again, and it was definitely not like a snack size bag, and I was kind of upset. But at the end of the day, it's like, well. When did you get them? Sunday. Uh, I was wondering, like, logos out of town. You're like, let's go get the hot Cheetos. <laughs> no. Usually when she goes out of town, you know, I have myself a little evening and just sprawl out on the couch, watch something with deck, maybe mm. have a couple uh, brewskis. But watch didn't do that this day. time because we got, a, we got a big, well, sorry, this is past. I apologize. Yeah. Um, but we're recording a little bit ahead. Uh, but, yeah, this time I didn't do it because I wanted to behave. Mm. Mm-hmm. Good so, for you, man. I've been craving a beer all day. It's my birthday <laughs> episode. I still, there's a possibility that I might go get one after this. Okay. I was already thinking about it. Wow. All right. Yeah, dude. I don't know. I don't think it's going to make that big of a difference for me. Well, I was going to do it. I was going to go and get us some just to like as a celebration on this episode because of Thanksgiving, which is my favorite holiday. We'll get to that in a second. Mm, yeah, um, I'm interested now because I feel bad that I downplayed your favorite holiday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, you're a piece of shit. I'm well aware. <laughs> And it's your birthday, so are you going to grow up this year? Probably not. No? No, I think I'm actually going to go backwards. I'm going to grow down. That's odd, because your father's episode, you said that you didn't want to go down that path again. I I don't mean that way. I was just being dumb in terms (laughs) of growing up. I mean, I don't... I'm grown. Grown. I think I'm as grown as I'm going to get. Okay, that's scary, but we'll go... Okay, let me ask this. What else do I need to change, man? Um... I have a job, I have a car, I, I have a place to live, yeah. I don't think I'm doing bad in life. What else do I got to do? I have to act all prim and proper because that ain't going to be me. Yeah, no, that'll never be you. And that ain't what I define as growing up, so I think I'm already grown. All right. Yeah. Doing good. Thanks. I would say some of your comments maybe that you make. Um, oh, weekends, yeah. But- oh, I'm, I'm aware. I already know also what you're referring to. <laughs> I'm very aware of what the reference is here that we're not going to say on air. No, we won't. But I know what you're saying here. Uh, you make me laugh. You know, it's... Uh, yeah, that's what I'm here for. Yeah, you definitely give the entertainment factor to our group in oh multiple different areas. Yeah, dude, I was, there. <laughs> I was literally thinking about that yesterday. I'm like, man, I actually saw a, a like, reel about it. And I almost sent like, all of you. <laughs> I stopped myself. I saw a, a post today, and it was like, um, you think losing, you think turning 30 is bad, or you think losing your significant other is bad. Imagine losing your best friend to, I don't know, a kid or something like that, and it's just this like 30-year-old sitting at a bar drinking. And when I saw it, I thought Brandon had made that video, but then it made me think that that might be you soon. What? Friends having kids. Oh, I didn't even meet him. I'm like, what? I don't think so. And if so, no, that will be a shock to everybody. Including me. <laughs> but no, I mean, it, could, it very well could be. I mean, I already have multiple friends with children. Yeah. Like, yeah, I guess so. Multiple friends with kids. And with kids on the way. I only know of one. And that's who I'm referring to. Okay. 
Yeah. I think if we're thinking the same person. Oh yeah, person. too. Yeah, that person's on the way. Yeah. No, I mean it's uh we're we're growing up. I don't know if we are, but the world's growing up. Yeah. So we'll see where life takes us. Anything um exciting about thirties? I think you got something planned for thirty. I don't know if we do anymore. Oh. After this last weekend, after talking about it, I don't know. Which we can reconvene off air and I'll fill you in on that scenario. We're giving you guys a lot of secrets today. I'm sorry. But yeah, I'll uh, I'll fill you in later. All right. Well, that kind of derailed the topic that I had around your birthday. Um, so we're going to go <laughs> to Thanksgiving because I don't know what to say after that comment. Sorry, bud. What's your thoughts on Thanksgiving? Let me actually play you my thoughts on Thanksgiving, dude. Oh, my God. Ladies and gentlemen, we have been talking about this since we started DTI. Yeah, I think we were meant to play it last year. Yep. Yeah. And so I want to take this time real quick, don't put it in yet, um, to bless you guys with not only something that lives in our families, our friends' lives, but something that lives out here in the world that you guys will now be able to play at your Thanksgiving dinners um, just around just the world. Just a clip, guys. It's just a clip, but we will send the link if you want it to the full I'll put version. it in the bio. We got to get the things going. Dylan, hit it, brother. Oh, it'll be hitting here in a second. I don't want to <laughs> mess it up and cut in too far. Speaking of kids having kids, because I can hear True. the turkey calling, I can hear the stuffing calling, I can hear the rose calling, Mama take them out the oven. <laughs> yeah, I can hear the turkey calling. You know, this was recorded in my mom in my dad's house. <laughs> was it really? It's recorded right in my childhood bedroom. Before we go into it, that was double D. The that hottest, specifically was just me. <laughs> the hot, he's in that track though, right? Yeah. Okay. The hottest fucking boy band in Cleveland. Boy band. <laughs> Rap group. Oh. Whatever you want to call it. Good thing that one was behind me. In Cleveland. Um, early to mid to, uh, 2010 era? Somewhere around there? Yeah, I mean, I was in college still. Okay, so like... Probably like 2015. 2015? 2016 to 17. I don't know. It's somewhere in there. That is Dylan and Dane's um, Thanksgiving song that they blessed us with. That's when... Uh, so we went from... I love how we have not even acknowledged your Viking helmet, by the way. <laughs> it's like, we've just been talking this whole time and I forgot you had it on until I just saw it right here. But uh, yeah, that was our... like We were like, let's stop like being serious for a little bit. Like, let's make a funny song. And the one day... That, for those who don't know, that's a future beat. That's a remix. The song's called Perky's Calling. Mm -hmm. And so I just did the, the little bird call once, and Dane was like, dude, let's make a Thanksgiving song. Like, There's no Thanksgiving songs. And I was like, you're right. And so we dubbed ourselves the Holiday Hitmakers, and then we dropped a Christmas tape like a year or two later of like five Christmas songs. I don't know if I remember that. Yeah. there's. It's called Milk and Cookies. It's yeah, on I do Cloud, remember dude. it. Yep. Um, yeah. So, yeah, if you guys want, go check them out. SoundCloud rappers back in the day. This kid's done it all. I mean, yeah. ladies and gentlemen, you think that he's health and wellness. wellness. I've you lived think a lot of lives. Positivity and encouragement. You think that he's a degenerate. You think that he's top of the world. I'm all of them. <laughs> he's everything. Ask it, check it. That's him. And uh, again, in his past life, he was a rapper. Um, Sometimes in my present life. He I'm had a feature with, with MGK, Chip the Ripper, and Kid Cudi that was unreleased because he got into some shit with the law. But maybe one day it'll get it'll get brought yeah, back sad out. Sad times, man. Sad times. But um, I'm happy that we still have that gem to live on. And uh, hopefully I wonder how many plays it has. And how many are me? <laughs> there, I would say at least 50 plus of them are me. I don't even think it has like a thousand. That's all right. 50 of them, I know. That's why I'm like, we got to just be the only ones throwing this thing out there. It's embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> I wish we played the whole song, but again, we'll... Hey, look how long it... Oh, no, that's the other thing. Yeah, I was like, we've been going guess. on for three minutes, though. No, nope. it's good. There's some bars in that bitch. We can drop the song at the end for anyone who wants to keep listening to it. My one buddy said that um, he wants me to jump on a track with him. And not only me... The one that I'm thinking of? The one or, you're thinking of. Like, actual actual track yeah but like for shits and giggles like not uh, to put out just like to uh, keep in the friend group but me tone matt uh jay bird and him all i jump would on love to a hear track you guys get on a track i think he actually said you too i what would love to hear you guys do it though 
I think I'll take it seriously, but I would like to hear you guys actually do it. So we're we're gonna do it, but we're it'll just be later on and it won't be released. Like we're not gonna put it out, but it'll. We should put it out, but like under something random and never share the link and just see how many plays it gets in like five years. We could do that. It probably won't get any. <laughs> <laughs> probably not, because look at Turkey calling. Yeah, that's true, and I share that thing every year. Yep. Um, so <laughs> I'm gonna jump on a track. At some point, probably next year, just for shits and giggles to see what it sounds wow. like. I'm excited for that one. I Who's, think who gets to pick the beat? Uh, we haven't got that far. All we know is that we're gonna go to the studio and have it legit, like produced and recorded, and we're gonna have a camera guy there so that way he can make like a little video of it as well. Mm. That's how most of my music was. It's just <laughs> this one. We're like, we're not paying for studio <laughs> time for this song, bro. I thought you guys did, to be honest. No, I was like, we could figure this out. We record the same thing we're recording this on is what I recorded that song on. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. yeah. There's just a whole bunch of these tracks going on. <laughs> That's great. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know if people have ever been to the studio or like seen a, a song come together, but that process is mind-blowing. Like, Does how- he still go to... Well, I guess he doesn't go now. But does he still go to the same... He went to the same dude in Akron that I did. I think so. Like, they found out about him like kind of through us, and they started going there. Yeah. That's where like all of our shows used to be. That dude used to produce the beats in front of us but and like he would or he'd like play some for us he was working on and let me and dane pick Damn. and then he would finish him up like in there while we're doing it we're all writing at the same time we just buy six hour blocks dude holy shit we'd buy six hour blocks and we'd have like one song ready go record that one and then if we had time we'd just fuck around yeah this was i think a four or five hour block that i went to but it really opens your eyes because you hear it and it's like we're sounding right now but at the end of it it'll sound completely fucking mm-hmm. different not like voice wise but just how you throw everything together the different Could be stuff voice-wise. you have yeah he didn't really change his voice much no. though um like ad libs and shit that would get thrown in it was really cool but it kind of opens my mind now to like if you can have that capabilities to make a track sound like that the editing capabilities that you can do for like movies and shit like that like i couldn't yeah. even imagine seeing that side of recording producing editing. you gotta have like a computer built for it like this one's fine for this but like if you you're really yeah. trying to make music this is not the way to go yeah it it'd be so fucking slow yep. i mean it might not be bad you just need multiple screens because you can't just do everything from right here yeah you ever gonna jump back in the studio i don't know to be honest i have a few things written that i would like to record mm-hmm. And I actually just got approached this week, three days ago, by Dane saying, hey, even if it never page. sees the light of day, would you like to jump on a remix just to get the juices flowing again? Is it therapeutic for you guys? Do you guys think that you're amazing? Do you guys, like, what What would be the direction? <laughs> I can't believe this is the the conversation <laughs> is that right now on this podcast. What so I be- actually have been listening back to older songs. Okay. Which I think I actually played you guys some when I was here, but I'm not even talking about those. I'm talking about the last thing that we wrote together. Yeah. Which didn't get shared out a lot, but me. yeah, maybe like when it dropped. Yeah. But it like was hosted by somebody else, so it's not like on our channel. It's on something else, like a mixtape channel, because this is like how fast music works, dude. You couldn't just upload songs to iTunes then. Mm-hmm. Like you had to actually be somebody to get on iTunes. Now anyone can just upload their own music to iTunes. Or Spotify and start making money yep. off of them. Like we didn't have that. I wish we would. Like it probably would have made things a lot easier. Yeah. I also think TikTok would have made it a lot easier. So I'm not gonna say I'm amazing, but I am gonna say I think that sound wise we were ahead of our time. We were listening to stuff the other day, and like I sent it to him, and he said the same thing. I was like, people weren't doing this then. Yeah. But now I think it'd be more socially accepted. Yeah, because you guys definitely did have a different like flow or style yeah. that you guys. And so. Yeah. Now, I don't know if I'd use therapeutic as the word, but I don't, I used to just try to write all, like I would write every day something mm-hmm. just to do it. And now I don't really write unless like I really am inspired to, because I don't okay. know if I necessarily see myself putting out a project or even, and I'm like, what's the point of just putting out one song? Yeah. Yeah. I didn't know if it was something, because I feel like you're a very, um, like you like putting pen to paper, but then seeing some, excuse me, something like blossom from it. So like your books, like you put pen to paper, but then you create like a book or something that goes along with it. Um, your journaling inspires you and like your fitness and mental like stuff that we do for DTI, your writing music and stuff like that. You can put like a music video to it or act like a song to it. To be honest, 
I think the biggest thing for me is I'm 30 years old. What do I think is going to happen? Yeah. People. Jake Holden blew up till like 28 or 29, though. You're past that. Barely. Huh? Days away from it. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. That'd be, it would have to be something really good, I feel like, for you to just start dropping shit. Yeah, <laughs> I really like, but like I said, there's easier avenues to make money in music now. You don't necessarily need to be big. Yeah. You can produce your own shit now, you own it, so it doesn't really matter. If people are listening, you're getting paid. And I don't need to be the biggest rapper. But if I can get paid to go do fucking little ass shows, I'm not saying I would not do it. But I also I don't know if I want to. I don't know if I want to take the leap all. to actually do it either. Like it would have to be. I'd have to have a banger of a song that I was like, "This has potential yeah. to even put it out." Yeah, I agree with that. Because then, if one took off, I'd be like, "All right, I could capitalize on one." Yeah. All you really need is one. That's it. You could be a one-hit wonder. It's fine. I would love to be a one-hit wonder. <laughs> <laughs> I've always wanted to be a famous person's best friend. So uh, get to it. Working on it. There we go, baby. Now, can we get back to the topic on why you hate Thanksgiving? Okay. I don't hate Thanksgiving. I just don't like Thanksgiving. God damn. I'm neutral on Thanksgiving. Well, Thanksgiving is never, like, that big for my family. Uh, now it's just my immediate family. And it really always was. Yeah. Like, my my dad's side of the family would kind of do Thanksgiving, but we would do our own. So then, like, just my mom's mom and her man would come. That makes sense. And so. Your mom has a man? My mom's 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 mom's. Well, she doesn't have him anymore. He's dead. R.I.P. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, he, I he I referred to him as my grandpa because he was like the only dude who was around. Okay. But I was just clarifying for the yeah. audience. <laughs> Thank you. But yeah, so they would they would come over and that was about it. Okay. Other than that, it was just immediate family. And back then, I haven't been with Thanksgiving in a while. It was like we do this every week. What am, what is this special for? Yeah. 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 I love Thanksgiving. It's probably one of my favorite holidays, and uh, it just makes me so sad because it gets bypassed by Halloween and then straight into Christmas, which I feel like Christmas is taking this like weird turn this year where everybody's about it like right the fuck now. I'm always about it. Dude, it's, it blew my mind. Like before even fucking Halloween was over, shit's popping up and people are posting videos about Christmas. I love Christmas. There was this mom who just punched the kid's pumpkin on the... Um, porch pulled out the guts of the inside and then smacks a Christmas tree down there and then does something else like kicks over a scarecrow and the next thing is yeah, the house is Christmas. I'm like, can we have a fucking second to celebrate? That's because it's such a big thing now. Like, I don't think she actually feels that way. She's like, I could probably go viral for this. <laughs> like, now people just she want did. the clicks, man. Yeah, the life is all about the clicks. Yep. But yeah, I'm seeing all this Christmas stuff and I'm just like, oh my God, this is draining. So, okay, let me ask you this. Okay. When would you ideally put up a Christmas tree? Probably December. Not enough time. But anyway, go. I want to hear why you like Thanksgiving. Um, I feel like you know that I'm like extremely big on like eating around the table and like sure. I love going out to dinners and you stuff. You could do like that. that at Christmas. Um, relax. We're talking about Thanksgiving. I'm just saying you could do that. Um, and my family, I feel as if we had just about everybody come in. Big Thanksgiving? Big Thanksgiving. Big home cooked. There was uh, probably 10 burners going in the stove. There's a oven upstairs, oven downstairs that things were in. Did there someone was, bring an oven over? No, my grandma had one up. In, <laughs> so like, like, the had one over? I'm like, why you got two ovens? She had one downstairs uh, just because we had such wow. big families that she couldn't have one stove to like cook all the food. And then from there... People would bring all their dishes. Aunts and uncles lived down the road. They would drive their hot plates over. So, like, we had these massive Thanksgivings where there would be a grown-ups table of 25-plus people, and then there would be a kid's table in a whole other area of, like, 15 grandkids that they had. So I think because of that, I just reminisce on, like, those good times. But they also still do that. Like, if I go back home, there's yeah. no no less than 15 people there. There's probably upwards of, like, 25 people that still go. This year we'll have eight yeah. Tops. So that's probably what it is. It's just that, like, um, I guess how we were raised and the preparation that yeah. went into the meal. Ours is like at my parents' house too. Mm -hmm. So it just felt like a normal, normal family meal. My parents, like, actually, I don't even know if they like it. Now I'm saying that out loud. My dad just has like one tradition. He plays like this one song every year. Turkey call. <laughs> yeah, that one too. <laughs> but then now my brother's taking that and he does it like with his kids on Thanksgiving. Okay. 
but that's that's like the only thing I could think of that's like every Thanksgiving. I think I also like about Thanksgiving is that the weather changes and I'm a big like colder, cooler, fall type weather guy in terms of like clothes because you know me, I don't really wear shorts ever. And so fall into the winter is my favorite time to like dress. Oh, I I love fall weather. Yeah. And dressing. I actually need to update my wardrobe. I was thinking about that the other day. I'm like, you ain't bought clothes in a while. You need to go spend some money. I haven't either because this fucking state doesn't have a Zara. I don't know if I've ever been inside of a Zara. Oh, it's amazing. It's the best clothing store. You know what clothing clothing store I went in recently? Abercrombie and Fitch. Not bad. Not bad. I have a lot of their like t-shirts and stuff. Dude, they completely changed their vibe in there. I realized this when I worked at like the warehouse in Columbus, like during COVID when I had to get a new job. Yeah. I'm like, well, fuck it. I know a guy who'll get me in. Yeah. That's when I they because everything comes out of there. Dude. And I'm just picking stuff like this is kind of nice. That was my job, right? I would take stuff off racks. And oh put wow. It. Like I had to walk up and down aisles and this little headset would tell me what item to grab. And so I'm just grabbing out of a box. Just mindless, dude. Like, you just tell me how many. I have to imp- I have to repeat it back to it. Oh. Like, this box, repeat the last three numbers, this many. And, like, then it would just register and tell me the next one. Huh. So, I'm, I'm like, just picking up clothes all day. Like, these are kind of nice, man. Yeah, they don't got so the logo it out myself. all over them. They got... Dude, I went in there. I was mind blown. I wore a shirt. This I think the day I was out with you, there was... Yeah. The uh, Grand Canyon one? Yeah. Yeah. That's from Abercrombie. Dude, that shit... They got fire tees. They got fire pants. I might have to go back there next time I'm and in I have Ohio. A, they do have really nice pants. Yeah. I struggle paying a lot for pants. And I don't know why, because they always last. I and struggle I'm, just paying a lot for clothes in general. Me either. But I'll go drop mad money at a restaurant or a bar. Yeah. Like, it's nothing. I'm like, why is the difference? I'm yeah. only enjoying this right now. Restaurants, you take me to a nice restaurant, money ain't a thing. Why I like going like there that? and enjoying it. I think it just, uh, like, the value of it. So, like, what do you get out of it? And but it's just... So, yeah, that's in the moment, though. Clothes, you're going to wear them multiple times. Yeah, but I was telling... I'm not going to actually give this idea out because I don't want anybody to take it. But, like, there's something about being around a table like and said, having... a lot of secrets this episode. <laughs> and having uh, just the conversations, the camaraderie, the good food. Like, dude, I would go drop uh, mad money by myself at a restaurant, bro. Me too. I almost came to visit you. I know it's not, like, a fancy restaurant, but I almost came to your work the other day just My to sit there open. and eat. All day less. Yeah, like, 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 is he coming? I thought about no, it. Dude, it was slammed. Thank God you didn't. Uh, it was the busiest night I've seen on a weekday well, in that's a long dope. time. Good. Are you enjoying uh, still having this second gig to... Yeah, just because I went down in days. It makes it a lot easier. Yeah, that's dope. Yeah, I don't know. There's just something about food. And so, like, even though the clothes can stay with you, I feel like I always just find some sort of value in the meals. Even if they suck, there's always something good about it. Yeah, I'll give you that. In clothes, it's like, oh, cool. But I'm always like, I shouldn't have spent that much money. I'll literally look at a shirt and be like, I don't want to pay 30 bucks for this. But then I'll just go drop 30 in 10 seconds on some drinks. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, what am I doing? That's why I said, that's why I was thinking about it the other day. I was like, you need to just take a weekend off and go buy some clothes. And I think when you're at the wedding, I might do just that. There you go. Go to the, uh, go to the outlets. I got a good might, source there. Might do it. <clears throat> Yeah, it's it's weird. Even like groceries, I hate buying fucking groceries. Me too. Ugh. <laughs> I want to move back in with my parents. Well, my mom. I was gonna say <laughs> parents <laughs> singular. <laughs> no, I saw another fucking post that pissed me off. That it was like there's more people within this age range, this age range that said they would move back in with their parents that already moved back in with their parents that said that what like. If you, I, first off, how do you feel about this topic of people, um, um, late twenties into their thirties, moving back in with their parents to situationally, save money? Uh, specifically just to save money. That's what the topic was around that. I saw an article on, I mean, I don't want to knock the hustle, but like, I just personally, I did it for like a little small stint when I came like from, I think it was Kent and I didn't know what I was going to do yet. And then COVID hit. Yeah, And I didn't know if I was going to move to Columbus or if I was going to go out of state or go get my master's yet. So I had originally just, they were like, just move back in and figure it out. I'm like, yeah, like I don't want to sign anywhere. And it was maybe two months. And I was like, I got to go. Yeah. I can't do this anymore. And so I just said, fuck it. And I just signed a year in Elyria of all places. And I was like, fuck it. I was supposed up here. I ended up getting my master's and shit and then COVID hit anyway. Yeah. But I was like, 
I just and that my parents weren't even like constricting. Like they weren't like, hey, you can't go do this, you can't go do that. But I just felt weird being in their home. I felt yeah. weird like my parents are downstairs hanging out and I'm up here playing Fortnite right now. <laughs> I'm like this just feels odd to me. Yeah, I mean, I know that it, it is definitely situational. So you can't bring girls home. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you can't, but it's real weird. I wouldn't, dude. I would feel so <laughs> odd like bringing yeah. a girl. I brought one. I snuck one over one time, <laughs> and like because I was like, I... we can't go upstairs. Like we can't go to the bedroom because they're over here. We can't go to the living room because they're gonna like hear the TV on if they go to the bathroom. And question me. So we gotta go to the basement. <laughs> <laughs> Un- unfinished basement. Bro, it's not even like. I was going to do anything. I just didn't want to be questioned about, like, why is this person here? It was half finished at that time. But uh, there was no TV or anything. We literally just sat on a couch and bullshitted. Yeah. It's, again, I know that if I just went in on my true feelings, people would be like, well, go in, somebody bro. Lose their job? What if they-? I'm not talking about that. I'm just talking about, like, if you're looking for the easy way out and you haven't put forth enough effort or changed your mindset of change your habits or your patterns or whatever you're doing in life, and you go back home, like you're taking the easy route. And what, I feel okay, like what about the people what, who never leave home? Better or worse? Hmm. Until like over 25. Like they don't leave home until their late 20s. Better or worse than someone leaving and coming back? Worse? Yeah! Way worse, dude. Like, what are you doing? Yeah. You're in high school no more. <laughs> you didn't even go to college. You don't have an excuse. Yeah, there's just something about it where, like, I feel like at some point, like, you have to grow up and, like, you have to well, fight I said I'm not. It. What? I said I'm not growing up. <laughs> that is a fact. So, Tommy T, he's moving Well, back he's in. not in my 30s. <laughs> um, but I, I just feel like there's so many factors that play into it. And everybody's like, well, you don't understand. And they look at all, like, the sad side of it. But it, excuse me majority of the time is I feel like people are just lazy and they're like, oh my God, I'm so overwhelmed with this and this and this and this and this. I'm just going to move back home because it's easier. When that's not the case, it's just going to be harder down the road. Okay. You're going to save a few hundred dollars, maybe thousands of dollars, whatever it is. But like, then what are you contributing? Like, are you just riding off your parents' coattails? Yeah. Cause I mean, okay, we're not putting any specific numbers out there, but imagine if you didn't have rent. Oh my God. Exactly. Dude. Mom, like, I'm moving home. And not only that, but like, Let's say that, hypothetically, you do move home. Something happens, you're like, fuck it, I want to buy a house or whatever, I'm going to move home for a year. Think about the amount of money you could actually save. They're probably not going to charge you for groceries. Like If they go to the grocery store, they're going to pick shit up. They're going to eat anyway, so you're probably going to eat with them. If I was living at home and me and my parents go out to eat, they're probably going to pay at least half the time. There's a lot more than just like the rent that comes into it, utilities. Yeah. I'm using their cable. I'm on all their shit. Their Netflix. Their Wi-Fi. Everything. Like, I don't have any furniture now unless it's in storage. So I probably sold that and I got more money. Maybe it's a better idea than I thought. And I'm looking no, at No, I'm it not saying it's a good idea. <laughs> but I'm saying, like, I can see how people do it. I don't think it's I don't think it's necessary. Yeah. For a majority of people. Yeah. Like like I said, if there's, if like there's a hardship or like something happens, okay. But like yeah. still actively work towards getting on your feet. But realistically, if you have a decent job. You can save a fuck ton of money in a year. Yeah. And some of them do it for more than a year. Or would be willing to. Dude, if I move back in with my mom, oh my God. Yeah. I'm going to look back at this one day when I like am going to listen to these. <laughs> You're going to be watching this on your mom's couch? <laughs> 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 Pulling clips like, fuck, I said that? <laughs> hey, edit this out. Take this down. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's just, uh, yeah, it's rubs me the wrong way a little bit and it could be because of the way that it's phrased in these articles i'm reading um and how it's it seems as if it's the easy way out there could be other stipulations and things i know but i think that's what they mean it though that's crazy i think that they mean legitimately especially with like work from home right now i think they probably mean like that they would legitimately move in with their parents solely to save money yeah well well live and you learn uh I've seen people struggle though, and they didn't ever take the easy way out. They figured it out and wrote it out as long as they had to. Even if they aren't struggling, I think that they would do it. I think that that's what the article is actually saying. That the people who aren't even struggling would just do it just because. And that's what I have the more of an issue with. Not even an issue, because I don't care enough to have an issue. I'm coming. Home. But I think that's what they mean. I'm coming. Oh. 
Yeah. Yeah. I wonder what my mom would say if I called her and told her that I was moving in with her. She'd probably be excited. And I think that's the problem is that most parents would be excited. Yeah. I don't know, though, because, like, I don't even know where I would live in her house. I move right back in my room. Same house. Yeah. Same house for you. I don't know. Interesting. I know I've asked you this before, but see any cool articles like that? Anything that's... You know I haven't. Come on, man. You got to you gotta see what's... Even if it's somebody doing something stupid on the internet. I ain't going on the news, bro. I don't want you to go on the news. Also, in the time frame that we've recorded, this has been mo- a couple days and I worked. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, I haven't seen any new articles. You can't let people know that. <sighs> well, that's all I got. Oh, you didn't have an article this time? You no, just, mine was the... Oh, mine I, was, I was like, this dude thought I had an article in the last two days that <laughs> he was planning on me talking about? No, mine was the movie back home. Oh. I, I saw that and I read it and I was just like, what the fuck? You need to start listening to The Hustle Daily. It's like a 7 to 25 minute podcast and it's not like boring news or like about the wars and shit like that. Like it's about like the tech industry not tech, but like Tesla and Facebook and things of that, or it's like what's going on in the world of things that are interesting, not like boring. I'm already news. uninterested. You're uninterested because you haven't heard it. Fucking listen to it. I don't care so about that, Tesla or Facebook or any of that shit. God damn it. You're too literal. <laughs> you literally named those things. Because they're interesting things. There's a lot going on that you should know about in this world. I don't care. I don't care, dude. <laughs> genuinely I, i'm not gonna bullshit you i don't care what do you what do you watch what do you care about besides playing fortnite i haven't played fortnite in over a week man really probably two wow all right i haven't played a lot i haven't really okay i watch reality tv <laughs> <laughs> genuinely that's what i watch what do you watch love island no that one's that one's too big of a man. It's five days a week jesus Right now, Big Brother's wrapping up. Well, it's wrapped up by this, so congrats to everyone. That's three days a week. That's still a lot. Oh, my God. I missed some episodes, so I just, like, catch up on Reddit. Yeah, I guess we're very different on what we do in our free time. Yeah. And even this isn't in my free time. I have this open while I'm doing, like, work during the day, and I'm uh, just listening to it while I'm doing I'm straight it. podcast during the day. Yeah. That's it. See, I haven't been watching any podcasts because I'm saving them for the race. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Makes sense. So I have a handful, and that way if one's uninteresting, I still can jump to another one real fast. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And also, you just said we're so different in our free time. I was here not too long ago, and you were watching Dancing with the Stars. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) I remember a time when I lived in that other apartment, had no furniture yet. You came over and turned me on to The Bachelor. Yeah. So it ain't that different. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah. No, I, uh, hey, sometimes you got to let your mind escape. Sometimes. That's why I do it. And also, I want to be on one of these shows one day, so I'm taking notes. Yeah, you were almost there one of the years. A couple in a row, actually. What were the shows that you were almost on? It was Are You the One? It's not really a thing anymore. It's just mm-hmm. on Paramount Plus. If they would have had you, the ratings would have went up. Dude. Especially I, in that era some of, of these chicks that were on that season are still on shows I watch today, and god damn, they just keep getting hotter. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Pisses like me Donald off, there, buddy. <laughs> no, bro. I'm too excited. <laughs> it's my fucking birthday. Let me do what I want. All right. But nah. Uh, what do good. you have planned for your birthday? Or what are we doing for it? I'm, you want to do a dinner? I'm going to be in Ohio. Hmm. Yeah. It's literally this Thanksgiving week. It's two days before Thanksgiving. Maybe the weekend before. Okay. Even though to go to Florida for Thanksgiving. Pretty excited about that. Get some sunshine, get some rays. Yeah, I'm jealous. Out at the beach. Um, so that's what I'm doing this year. It'll be the first time that I go to Lowe's Families because last year I got extremely sick on the way there. Oh, got I remember to, that. Got to Nashville. Yeah, I got to Nashville, I believe it was, and started like shivering. Oh, it's, that was a long time. Had to get a hotel wow. room, had to get back on the uh, flight the next day, back home, and I was couch ridden for like a week. It was awful. I do remember that. Yep. So all of our friends were down here. They had Friendsgiving, and they're having a great time. Uh, Lowe's families in Florida. Were you here already? 
Yeah. Holy yeah, shit. we had just gotten here. Dude, I'm reading in my journal and stuff like that. And you know what? Let's let's talk about this. We'll give this podcast right. some context. Um, so I just started journaling about a year ago is when I got my first journal and really started to focus on it. And I was preaching about it, but I wasn't taking full advantage of it or I didn't really know what to expect or like why I was doing it because again, it was so new to me. But I knew that every time I did it, I was like, I like this. I don't know why I like it, but I like it. And uh, so fast forward to this time right now, and there was so much in this time period that we're, we've been living in the last like two and a half weeks of like change, leaving AT&T, um, leaving Dallas, leaving my friends, um, moving out of an apartment we just moved into, finding a new one, visiting Tone and Nikki, finding an apartment down here, moving here, having my best friends live in the same city as me, like starting a new job. There was just so much going on. And uh, I, I've been reading my journal these last like two and a half weeks of like what I was saying last year and stuff like that. And there's like some sense of like, peace gratitude excitement like oh shit you've come far like there's so many different moments i get reading that last year's one and now adding this year's to it that like i'm excited because it's a five-year journal i'm excited yeah. to be able to reflect on you're all five years on one page right yeah so you write like kind of looks little small excerpts yep are they always like positive things nope not always dude because let me tell you mine isn't like a five-year it's just an open journal mm-hmm. sometimes when i'm in a mood i'll write for pages oh wow and i'm just I'm very, like, every time, like, someone comes in town, I hide my journal mm-hmm. out of, like, a fear that they're going to pick it up yep. and be like, what is wrong with this guy? Yeah. Because I'll go back, and I actually have to, like, flip back, and because I have to, I number them all myself, like, because okay. it's just a, literally just, like, an empty journal, because mm-hmm. it's originally going to be when I write in. I was just flipping through the other day, and I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> this guy has problems. I'm doing that about myself. I'm like, this is how you're feeling on this day? Like, this is not okay. Yeah, but it, and then it shows you, like, today how good you're feeling compared to that day. Sure, but, I mean, in the last couple of weeks, there's been some real, real bad ones. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, my God, dude. Like, That's I was, guess it gets it out of my head, but I'm like, jeez. <laughs> no, anyone I was just this. talking to somebody about journaling because they're starting, like, this new journey. And I was like, as you're going down it, I bought them a journal. I was like, fucking write stuff down. I was like, be as uh, vulnerable as you want, be as open and transparent as you want. Nobody's going to fucking read it, but document it. So that way you can look back this time next year and be like, that's why I had to go through this. That's why I'm doing this. That's why, that's why, that's why. And again, I do have those realizations too. Yeah. Because to like, be fair, some of them, I literally will write in there like fucking proud of you. Others of them, I write in there my thoughts in my head and I'm like, what the fuck? Like you just said. Other times I'm talking about like you or I'm talking about Low or I'm talking about Decker. Like there's just so many. I different- don't want to read it any of the ones about me since i moved here there's just so many different things that i've talked about in my journal that um i know that if somebody's going through something or they want something in life if they start journaling right now it will help contribute to the success of making said thing come to life and it'll make you realize that because we preach a lot that we have all been to our lowest lows everybody is different on the caliber of how low you've gotten what you went through during that time period but the goal ultimately in life is once you get to your lowest low you never want to get back there or you never want to get below that and i think journaling helps you realize a year later you look back and it's like man i'm struggling with this and this and then you read back last year and it was like oh my god i was in a way darker place than i am like there is so much more that's happened there is so much more that like i'm achieving in life let me breathe a little bit. I also think that when you keep things in your head, you're not like you can convince yourself other like other mm-hmm. things. Like you can talk yourself out of saying certain things. But like if you're writing them down, like I think you're way more open. I think even if you speak them out loud, you're way more open. Yeah. I was literally on a walk today with the dog and I was like, I didn't take my phone or anything. I was just like, just it was early, early. It was dark. No one else was out. It was freezing. It's like, just go talk. I was walking around my neighborhood for 20 minutes just talking out loud. And I was like, how did I get to this topic in my head? Like, I would have never got to this topic in my head. Yeah. I would have probably pulled my phone out and done something else. But I was just going. I'm like, oh, my God. How am I here? Can you? uh Nope. I'm definitely not talking about what it was about. Not even a little bit? Not even a hint. I won't even <laughs> tell you what it was about off air. <laughs> oh, damn. <laughs> That's like those daily drive-bys that I film and need to start posting again. I don't know why. I was why about to say, been... two weeks. I yeah, looked at the last one yesterday. <laughs> yeah, I have a couple loaded. I, I don't know why I'm not putting them out as frequently because I have a ton that are backlogged. Um, but I'll get back to it. 
Maybe it's because I'm focusing too much on the TikToks. Um, it, it actually, now that you say that, I haven't posted any today. And I literally pulled them all off my computer today mm. to post. Because if I have like a stockpile on my phone, it's easier for me just to throw yeah. them up when I think about it. But no, yeah. it is like throughout the day, I'm like, oh shit, I haven't posted. Yeah. And I'm like, I would need to get one up now so I can get one up in five hours. It's a lot. Yeah. Like I need to set like little reminders on my phone to just pop up, like post right now. Yep. But I don't want to be the same time every day. That's a problem. That's definitely what it is. So on the weekends, I need to just edit like five of the daily drive-bys and since we can schedule them to schedule them because yeah. during the week I'm still pulling old episodes converting them to the document then mm-hmm. this then this then this and this and this then I can finally post it but oh wait I got to go back and edit this and edit and so it's just like my focus has been so ingrained in getting all that stuff done so that way we can just move forward with the new content yeah. um, but again I think we're making great strides and consistencies on different things that once we get these patterns down of like, we're doing this really good. Okay. Now we can incorporate. Now we can incorporate because we talk about that all the time. It's doing it slowly and building up from it. And so, although we're not consistent in certain content that we post, we're still posting content across the board, across the board. So, um, yeah, looking at that and even I was playing our first podcast episode yesterday, dude. I'm not then not even nearly down there with pulling clips from the ones above, but I was like, let me see what this looks like. Dude, you got such a baby face in that fucking first one that we have. It was only like a year and a half ago. I had hair. But you had hair too. I had hair. And you were like super like it almost looked like your head was smaller. I don't know how. I don't know how either. <laughs> the tiny head. But it was pretty cool seeing that. I was like, oh wow, what a journey. Starting off in that uh, Cedar Springs apartment that I lived in in Dallas. It's like, I miss that place. That hotel or that apartment was so nice. It was like a fucking house. Yeah, my apartment wasn't the greatest, but it got the job done. That's all that matters. Just got to start, baby. Or I can move back with my parents. You never know. <laughs> We're almost to episode 100, too. I know. We keep saying that we need to remember, but I keep forgetting. It's two more after this. Oh, shit. Yeah. We got to really get this thing going then. Yeah. We got to get some decorations. Decorations. We got to get some of those. Champagne, dude. Oh, we could do that. Pop some bottles. Show up in like suits. Okay. You know, we halfway there. I had to show up for your birthday and things. Same, bro. <laughs> I, uh, I put the jeans on, though. I got, I got, My stomach's growling. I, got I think it wants a beer. On, but you guys can't see it. <laughs> Relax. We I can't. can't celebrate you, though. Yeah. Well, guys, it's been real. It's been real. It's I'm been officially fun. old. Wish our guy happy birthday. He has crossed over to the big 3-0. And I want you to remember, brother. Femo me, Dylan dash stacker dash one. If you're feeling so inclined. You're fake. I wanna I wanna remind you of something. Oh God. <clears throat> because there's this stipulation in the world Please don't. that uh you have to be something when you turn thirty years old. And I do not want you to get caught. You tell me I'm not a, I'm not something. <laughs> No, no, no. Like everybody thinks that you have to have kids, you have to be married, you have to be uh, all of these things by 30. And I want to let you know, don't let that get caught in your head. Don't get caught in this hype of what the world thinks you have to be at 30 years old because that shit is so old school. Yeah. It's the most bogus stuff. And if you start getting depressed or down on yourself because you're like, oh, I didn't eat them and I'm 30 and but fuck that. Don't Keep worry. living your life I'm not. to the fullest. <laughs> Do what you want to do. Be fucking happy. Reach your dreams. Tackle your goals. And that's it, baby. Live life. Have the desire to inspire. And always remember. That's all I got. Kiss your mama. Uh, That's what I was waiting for. (laughs) It's all. Peace.